How's it going guys? In this tutorial here, we are gonna take any piece of geometry and sort of destroy it or morph it with a really cool effect using volumes and simulation zones in geometry nodes. It's fairly simple and straightforward and it's kind of an interesting alternative to traditional displacement. And I think it's really fun to use and try different things with. If you wanna get the project file that is currently available on Patreon, there's also a ton of new tutorials on the Patreon. The recent particle series talks about creating dynamic particle simulations with repeat zones and noise textures and shows different ways to shape your particles to look like anything you want. Right before that, I released a series of sci-fi inspired tutorials showing you several different ways to achieve this really interesting animation style and shows you how to get all of those styles in your work. These tutorials along with a ton of others are available on my Patreon. If you wanna check that out, that is linked in the description and you can get a discount if you subscribe annually. All right, with that being said, Let's make this. To get started, you are going to need any piece of geometry. It does not matter a sphere, a logo, a hand, a face, just something with some decent topology. We are going to be able to, we are going to be essentially volume remeshing this so it doesn't entirely matter, but have some kind of shape that you want to play with. You can just throw a sphere or a cube in here um, just to start. It really doesn't matter. So now that we're here, I'm going to hop into the geometry nodes workspace and customize uh, my space to what I want. You can keep it at default. It really doesn't change anything. So we're going to have this. Let's go ahead and click a new node tree and let's pop in a simulation zone right in the middle and we'll plug geometry here and plug this into the output. So now he is just sitting in the middle. So let's first create the main effect or sort of the bones of it. I'm going to give myself a little bit more space. And first we're going to get a mesh to volume. And then we're gonna get a volume to mesh. So what we wanna do is switch this from amount to size. And then I'm gonna give my voxel size, say 0 0.005. And that is going to define essentially the how dense your geometry is. So if I bring this up, if I play with it, you can see it's it's it like the remesh modifier. Uh, it's volume remeshing it, which is really cool. Um, so now we have that. So we have these two things. And if you're not familiar with simulation zones, essentially, when I press play, it is going to convert it to and from uh, a volume and a mesh over and over and over and over again. It's simulating that each step that you provide within the zone, it's going to repeat that each frame. Uh, it's very similar to a repeat zone, but in this case, we press play and it does it rather than clicking how many times you want it to repeat. Um, so you can technically do this with a re uh, repeat zone as well. What we can do now is go ahead and get a set position node. Now we're going to create the displacement essentially. So we're going to get a noise texture and we're going to need to get a vector math node. And all he is going to do is define how strong the displacement will be by switching it to scale. Very simple here, plugging that into the offset. I'm going to click I'm going to click normalize and right now the displacement is insane so i'm going to bring it down to 0 0.01 and so it just displaces it a little bit and like i mentioned the simulation will repeat uh action so it displaces a little bit when i press play it will continue now it's going to disappear you need to turn that intern uh internal bandwidth to zero so it doesn't do that so now when i press play it's going to repeat that displacement and do that. It's really cool. There's a few problems that we're gonna encounter. For me, I'm gonna bring my scale to 0 0.005, um, just like that. Now, the way you can kind of mess with this is you bring up the scale of the texture and that will define, you know, how it looks. And now you have this insane thing that came from a logo. Few things, I'm gonna bring my scale down to like 5.6. You see these ba this banding? I'm going to go ahead and get a uh, set shade smooth node. You can see how it has this banding. So we're going to go ahead and fix that really quick. I'm just going to go, I'm going to press play here. We can just see it. So what we need to do is first get a new set position node here. And we're going to get a sample nearest surface node. Sample nearest surface. And we're going to go ahead and get a position node. Now, why does this work? I can't entirely tell you. I don't understand. It's a little higher level than I'm capable of. I got, I learned this fix from this video here by researching different growth methods in Blender. So I highly encourage watching that video. That video is awesome. I followed it. 
I made the growth effect. It was really, really cool. So I highly recommend watching his video on that particular effect. Essentially what we're building here is a like a baby version of that. Um, so what I'm gonna do is switch the sample nearest to vector and plug position into value and sample position and we'll plug value into position. So now see those bandings, see how that looks? We're gonna go back and press play, no more banding. It's beautiful. So shout out to that creator. He uh, created a fantastic fix. So I'm gonna bring my scale up a little bit on my noise and then we can see, okay, that looks awesome. Now what I wanna do is be able to kind of enjoy this effect uh, without affecting the whole thing. I kind of want to be able to recognize the logo or if you're using a face or a hand or a car, whatever. Um, I want to be able to see some of the growth. I want it to look like it's growing out of the shape, but still be able to kind of see the shape. So what I'm going to do is get a mix vector. So we'll get a mix vector node and I'm going to bring this down and we're going to be mixing basically this uh, displacement with just nothing. And so what we're going to do is get in a another noise texture. So we'll just go ahead, you know, I noise texture and we want to use color. So it still respects X, Y, Z values. So we're going to get a RGB curves node. And then I'm just going to I need it. Um, and I need to give myself a little bit more space down here. So get an RGB curves node and plug color into color color into factor. And then the last thing we need to get is a vector math node just set to add so we can uh, goof with it a little bit. Uh, I'm going to, looks like my, somehow my noise texture got unplugged. That's weird. Okay. Uh, I'm going to bring my scale to 0 0.01 just so we can see it a little bit more. So first we are going to, so if I just press play, it doesn't change much at all. Um, I need to sort of exaggerate the selecting so I'm going to go and take this RGB curves and flip it and then give it just your classic S curve that you'd see in a lot of uh, a lot of color and like After Effects tutorials. So we're just going to take this here and if I press play, still not a lot. So what we're going to do here is with this add node, bring up the value and it's going to sort of crunch in a little bit more of that. So now see how there's portions here that are still maintaining kind of the structure of the logo, that is that is what I'm looking for. And the more positive you bring that value, the more it'll crunch it to a point where like in 7, uh, 780, 0.78, it crunches it all completely out. So start to play with it and you can get some cool stuff. If you switch the noise texture over to 4D, it will, you can kind of pick where you want that uh, displacement to happen so you can move around the position until you like where it's affecting it and you can have a lot of fun so this is this is what we're getting so far I think this is really cool so I'm gonna leave this like this maybe even bring up the scale of my noise texture and then bring up the scale of the noise texture here as well press play again I want some really interesting crevices and growths Sweet. So now we have this. This is this is the effect. This is how you do it. So now, what's the point of a really cool effect if we can't make it look cool? So we are going to now uh, shade this and uh, make it look really cool with materials. So we're going to go ahead and get a set material node right over here to the material section. We are going to get a new material and I'm just going to call it anything I want. I'm going to call it oops. Um, so now we have that and I'm, we're going to head to the shading window and then I'm just going to switch this over to the shader editor. I'm not even going to use the shortcut and then I'm going to be using cycles for this. So go ahead cycles and I'm going to hit the drop down and hit scene world scene light so I don't have to add lights uh, already. So let's take this and I'm going to show you a few really cool tricks on how to get some uh, really interesting effects for uh, something like this where there's a lot of weird displacement going on and you just want to make it look awesome. So we're going to get a color ramp. And first let's get a ambient occlusion node and plug that there. And then you'll notice when I bring this in, it adds color to these crevices and these points that are really close to each other. So that is a really cool opportunity to add something interesting to the model. So I'm going to bring this in, bring that in something like that. I'm going to make first subsurface, bring that all the way up, 
bring your radius to one on everything, and then you can bring your scale up uh, to say like two, and that'll let enough light in to make it look interesting. And then the black, I'm gonna make it like a light pink, something like this, and then this one, a light blue. So now we have this weird look. I'm gonna bring my scale down a little bit, maybe to a scale of one. So now we have this interesting subsurf. What I'm gonna do now is mix another really cool effect. So we're gonna get a mix color node. I'm gonna click here and then hit Control C on the pink and Control V. And we're gonna go ahead and get a color ramp and a layer weight. The layer weight is gonna add another effect to this. So we're gonna use facing and then plug this into the factor. So if I just bring this color ramp in to kind of show what this is doing, if I bring my blend in and out, see that? So it starts to give more of an effect to now these regions where there's a curve. So if I were to just, we can see kind of a before and after. If I just plug in the original color ramp to the base color, we have that. And if I go back, we have a little bit more pink going into other areas of our object. So it adds a little bit more interest. Uh, I just think it looks cooler. And I'm gonna bring my color ramp down a little bit. We have this. Last thing we're gonna do Let's go ahead and get in a mix shader node. We're gonna get a metallic BSDF and we're gonna plug that into the shader. And then I'm bring my roughness down so it's nice and shiny. And then let's go ahead and get in a geometry node and a color ramp. So we're gonna go ahead and use the pointiness in the color ramp and the color into the factor. And then if you bring this in, bring that in, you're gonna get this kind of edge wear look where we're adding this metallic to just the edges. And you can make it gold, um, you can make it anything you want. And now you have something that looks really, really cool. And that's pretty much it. Lighting should be simple. If you really wanna light it, I'm just gonna get a camera, do something like this and then Lighting, especially in cycles, uh, with logos can be very, very simple. If you wanna go really basic with it, you can just get an area light, scale it up, bring it to the top, something like that, and then you can duplicate it and get, I believe it's called a key light on the back to highlight some of these edges. And now you have something really, really cool, very fast. So if I were to render this, this is our final finished logo. The one thing I would say to finish this off is to just up your voxel. So I'm going to go back to geometry and your voxel size to something like 0 0.001 and then re sim actually 0 0.001 might be way too much. 0 0.002 and then re simulate. So I'm just going to let it go through. So there we go. That is re simulated at a higher voxel. So you just get more details. And then I would say we can add the metal a little bit more present. And then the last thing, of course, you need to do in geometry nodes is just go ahead and bake it. So you add a bake right after the simulation and then bake a still image. So now you can go back to frame one and it doesn't undo. So there you guys go. This is the final image. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this and got something really cool out of it. This is kind of just a random idea that I thought would be really cool to make a video about. And I think it's super cool and beneficial. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you got something out of it. Again, if you want to check out all the other projects and tutorials and series that I'm doing on Patreon, you can check that out linked in the description and I'll see you guys in the next one.